Howdy folks, it's Ben. We're dealing with my 1994 Chevy Caprice. It's a station wagon, but for this video that doesn't matter. It's got an LT1 350V8, but this will, I believe, also work on the L99. Uh, what we're fixing today is the heater core. It's not really kicking out a lot of heat at idle. So we sit here in the yard, we warm the engine up. Uh, not a lot of heat comes out. It's warm, but it's not really hot. Uh, however, when you have higher RPMs, like you're accelerating or something along those, those lines, uh, you get a lot of heat. So it seems like there's some sort of restriction in the heater core system. Um, there are two fixes for this. We can do what we're going to do today, which is flush the heater core, or to replace the heater core, which is more of a pain. So we're going to try the easy method first, and then we're, if we have to, you'll see another video on how to change a heater core. Um, the pipes we're dealing with today come off the water pump here. Uh, this is the return from the heater core, and this is going to the heater core. So this is pressurized, heads up to the heater core, uh, and there's a restriction in the pipe that goes along and then goes up to the firewall back there. The return comes back, it has this T-assembly here. This is your expansion tank, it goes up into your expansion tank. So that's where the system uh, puts extra water when it has it. And then it comes on back, returns to the water uh, pump. So what we're going to do today, the quick and dirty plan, is we're going to release these two deal with the heater core and the expansion take to a degree uh, and we're going to plug these real quick so we don't drain our entire system and we'll try to recover as much as we can and see if we can run some uh, flush i have some just generic prestone flush we won't use it all of course because we're just dealing with the heater core and hopefully it's not going to cause any leaks but that's what we're going to do not many tools are required but a lot of little things are going to be needed um, this is going to be our sending and to keep from draining the rest of the system of coolant, uh, I have these little very thick rubber bands. They come off lobsters, but any rubber band will do in a Ziploc bag. So when I separate this pipe, I've got a container, a clean container, to catch the coolant that comes out because there's nothing wrong with the coolant. Um, so this will drain out. This will want to drain the system out. But what we'll do is we'll just quickly place uh, our uh, Ziploc bag and a uh, big elastic over the end here, hopefully uh, stop any leakage on that end. And we'll do the same with the top. Won't be as much cooling out of this one just because it'll have drained out of the bottom. Also, the entire contents of our expansion tank are going to drain in here because uh, this is the T-line that goes uh, right down into our container. So if we catch it, it's a coffee can. Uh, if it's full, everything else, I've got another container on the bottom that's dirty. Uh, we'll just dispose of that up appropriately. A little more. we got to be quick with this because there's going to be... It's going to come flooding out. Holy crap. Didn't expect it to come out like that. Which makes sense, I should have, uh, the car is warm. It's been parked for several hours. I thought the system might have been depressurized, but obviously there was a little left. Take my Ziploc. Get it over this. <laughs> my rubber band. Okay, so we squirted coolant everywhere and the rubber bands were too big and uh, or my battery camera died, so, or, yeah, camera battery died. So anyway, let's do the second tank, which actually, this actually has a T in it, so we'll actually get a lot more out of this one. Uh, the radiator, I believe, is higher than the water pump, so we will get leakage constantly if you don't uh, plug these up, I think. So just to be on the safe side, that's why we use the Ziplocs and the rubber bands is to just make sure we don't leak all our coolant out. So the engine side is now clean and we have our two heater core hoses open and the recovery tank is exposed. So I'm going to pull this container out now. If I need to I can use this coolant but if I don't I'm not going to. No harm in putting new coolant in the system anyway. And now everything's going to be caught by my pan down below. So next we're going to start with the flush and what I'm going to use is a funnel in some hot water. We have one heater core hose down in our container which is the same size as this one um, and I'm just going to start putting water through the uh, system until it comes out relatively clean um, and then we'll start with our flush. And I'm running it through backwards right now and I'll run it till I see the water is pretty much coming out clear and then I'll reverse flow and try it the other way. I'm trying to get any dissolved solids or any chunks out. There's already a big chunk that came out. There's the first batch, so we'll dump this and we'll do it again. You can see in the container there, there are some black chunks. Don't know where those came from, but they can only mean bad things, or at least 
the things that will get us good things in the future. Reverse flow, which is actually the normal flow for the car. Okay, I'm using a uh, super flush by Prestone. It's a generic flush material. Um, it's built for the whole system. So obviously this is uh, <clears throat> more than I need. So I'm going to use about a quarter of the container, mix it in with some water since that's how you're supposed to do it. I'm going to flood the system till some comes out um, so I can flush it through and then I'll make another batch and then we'll lift up both ends and we'll just flood the system with this material and we'll come back in oh say five or ten minutes and we'll flush it all out again. And now we pour some in. So with that, I still have about a quarter of the container left. Once it's done going through, I'm gonna lift up the exit so they're about the same height and just fill up the system. <clears throat> now that the system's topped off with cleaner, I'm gonna make some more flush mix. I'm gonna run it the other way now. That way we're sure we get every little hole. Um, I'll open that up, close it back up. With this closed, it's generally a pressurized system on its own, so it won't fill up the tank. But now I'm going to pour it in here until I get some out of the flush hole, and then I will raise the other end up and we'll let it sit for a while. And now the home stretch. We've got, uh, it's been sitting for a while. Now we're going to flush, flush, flush. <clears throat> Taking my lips and blowing on the heater core pipe. I am getting quite a bit of rust material out. So it seems that there was something up actually in the heater core that was pretty nasty. Okay, so everything's been purged, clean, pushed through. It's as good as the heater core is going to get from this side of things anyway. So what I'm going to do now on my coffee can lids is uh, reattach everything and I think the order I'm going to put them together in um, is going to be it doesn't really matter so I'm gonna put the bottom one on first the top one first um, then we'll flood the system uh, and we'll do a lot of burping because the LT1 likes to get burped quite a bit on the coolant system here so let me just reassemble some stuff here and my rubber bands out of the way I'll let you guys hear my Corvette starter again Here's a bleeder screw for the LT1, so on top of the thermostat. The verdict? Holy crap, is it hot in here. <laughs> that totally worked. I didn't think it would. I mean, I had hopes, but uh, it is night and day difference. The air coming out of this thing is unbelievably hot. The car is up to temperature. That's where it usually sits all the time. Um, but man, it is uh, completely different. Where it used to be kind of warm, uh, you actually have to turn the heat down now because right now I'm boiling in here. So, totally awesome success. Everything looks good under hood. So, that's how you'd bleed the heater, or uh, that's how you'd flush out the heater core on a 1994 Chevy Caprice LT1, Royal 99. Same difference.